Hey guys, welcome back. It's your brother in Christ, Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So today's article comes out of natural news. Let's get into it. All right, guys, this is only the video, the only video I've produced this week um, because I've read a lot of articles and some of them I didn't know if I could talk about, like the, the Balenciaga stuff. I'm not sure if I can really talk about that. Um, but uh, um, maybe I can do a video on it and talk about my thoughts but this right here, I've paid attention all week to what's been happening in this area of the world. And it's, uh, it just seems, it just screams um, uh, new world order. So let's read. It says here, um, crypto executive dies in helicopter crash, the third crypto entrepreneur to die unexpectedly over the past few weeks. Now I have read, I've seen multiple articles where I think it's like three or four major crypto billionaires millionaires or self-made people right um have just passed away and uh and it's been kind of just sudden so i'm trying to get away from the the suddenly thing the the d-i-e-d -E suddenly so just in case there's something going on with that right i'm just trying to just just not like be peaceful as doves and sly as serpents kind of thing right you know just as like make sure that i'm not going to walk on something where it's going to blow me up. So um, it says here, the world of cryptocurrency is seeing a whole lot of mysterious deaths these uh, these days. One of the la latest being the unusual crash of a Russian billionaire crypto entrepreneur helicopter near Monaco. Um, via she Sheflov, Sheslov, via Sheslov, Tehran, 53 died after a helicopter crash in good weather near the resort of Villa Franco Sommer after taking off from Louis Lu Lausanne in Switzerland. Man, that's a lot of words I haven't said. Toronto's the third the third such crypto entrepreneur to die unexpectedly over the past few weeks. Before Toronto's death, 30 year old uh, Tian Tian or TT is what they called him uh, died in his sleep. Right before that, 29 year old Nikolai Mushigian drowned on a Puerto Rico beach not, not long after, tweeting that he feared that he might be. Tweeting that he feared he might be like this by a central things that start with eyes, central eyes, um, and things that are not, these things are not of an agency. You see what I'm saying? You see it on there. Uh, and, and, and it's an Israeli counterpart, Mossad. The further strange uh, about Tehran's death is about another passenger who's supposed to be on the helicopter canceled last minute. Now, that's, that's pretty interesting. That coupled with the fact that it plunged to the ground in good clear weather strongly suggests foul play. Tron was co-founder and trading investment platform Liber Liber Libertex and Forex Club. His pilot, his pilot, a 35-year-old man, was also killed, said to have been a very good experience flying in a single-engine H-130 helicopter. A deputy public prosecutor from Nice, France, or Nice, France, however you say that. Uh, visited the scene and reported that a third party being involved of a crash could not be ruled out. At least five crypto tycoons have died under mysterious circumstances in 2018. In the years prior, several other crypto guru gurus have died under mysterious circumstances. Their names were Gerald Cotton, Matthew Mellon, both of them uh, whom died sharing keys of crypto wallets worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The death of Cotton was so controversial and mysterious that someone produced a documentary on uh, Netflix about it. I had no idea. Um, there is, what is it? It says, there's belief among some that the whole thing was faked as a part of a bigger crypto scam. The uh, odd circumstances surrounding his untimely death also included the fact that he signed a will just nine days before his demise, fueling suspicions that uh, Cotton, CEO of Canada's largest crypto exchange, faked the whole thing. To this day, 169 million is missing, prompting investigators and victims to question whether he orchestrated his mysterious pocket, or orchestrated the mystery and pocketed the funds. Some investors have even demanded his body to be exhumed. Um, what else? Uh, I haven't done this whole thing. Um, yeah, and then it just talks about other people concerning somebody uh, on November 23rd. Colander unexpectedly died in his sleep. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to cover this is because there's been multiple articles that I've seen on multiple sites that I frequent that, um, that have been talking about these big crypto tycoons. Right. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because, um, well, there's also been a lot of people who have, uh, people who have just died, um, so quick, right. I'm just removing the word, um, uh, from some things that just happened so suddenly, um, I'm trying to make a statement with that word instead of putting the two words together. You see what I'm saying? Just been randomly falling. I think I saw five or six articles back to back to back of people who are all across different ages who have just recently passed away so fast. Um, and then I've seen uh, this whole crypto thing. So maybe this is a two-parter, but 
Um, the reason why I want to talk about the crypto thing is because um, I agreed. I saw somebody talking about this, and in my head, it made total sense. I forgot where I saw it, but it, um, the initial thought was is that as we see these big crypto tycoons start to, you know, pass away uh, from natural natural causes, right? Let's just say that, and, and it most certainly could be, right? I'm not trying to be disingenuous by any means. Um, it makes evidence, and the whole thing that's happening with the FTX, um, uh, the guy that is like all over the news right now um, with his with supporting a certain party, and he's made he didn't have a board or anything like that. I forgot his name. Anyways, um, it makes sense that people would then start to see this this crypto and these bi these billionaires or millionaires, whatever who are into digital wallets to seem like they're, they are uh, mischievous or, or um, uh, not upfront, not public, underhandings. And so your, your, your authoritarians in power, right? We're not gonna say the gover, the gover people, right? They will clamp down on that, which then boosts the idea of saying, well, we need a CBDC so we can control it, right? A central digital banking currency which then allows and says all these other things that are trying to be that with private private companies or anything like that and you know people who are trying to um, live the American dream. It would make sense that this would happen to people like that, right? Like that um, intentionally because you can give power to this CBDC, which is then it's going to be like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna track your funds, right? And what does that sound like? This is my right hand. Those you cannot buy or sell, lest he who have the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name, let the reader have wisdom. It's the number of a man, his number is 666. This is Revelation 13, right? We've talked about this so many times about how we're getting to a society. How does that happen? And these just little things connecting dots make sense to me. Um, and uh, and when I see that, I'm like, man, there's just been a lot of people who have like suddenly something's happened to them, and then you can plaster some fake news about their organization and make it seem like there there needs to be oversight from your gover people in power, right? Um, and then that happens. So, you know what? This is why we need CBDCs. This is why we can't have people do this or anything like that because they are malicious in nature. They are nefarious. They are not public. They're, they're not public with some of this information. They're not clear. We need oversight. We need these boards. We need people in power. We need SARS in power, X, Y, and Z. And thus, you give that power to the to the people who the gover people who are um, pushing for a CBDC, which then allows me to think in my head that makes sense because I believe that there's a lot of corruption all over the place. We just don't know it. Uh, we, live, we definitely live in a fallen world, and there's corruption all over the place. I mean, I'm looking at an article right now with the whole Santa thing that said we love Satan, and then I know it. I know I've seen this before. Like we love Satan, and I didn't know anything about it in my head because I was like. Ooh, who's Satan as a kid. Uh, but I used to, I grew up on the Santa Claus movies. And then, you know, they're gonna, the kids are gonna go, oh, look at the signs. And they're gonna make sure they turn around and say, so it's a Santa. And it's like, no, like this stuff is, it's been there. It has been there for years. Um, and you see what some things are built upon, right? And so who are people are worshiping and people who are in power and these elitists and, uh, and these religious zealots who are obviously worshiping Satan. And we live in a fallen world. Bible are already is exclusively talking about this to us and tells us that in the last days. And there are plenty of things that are gonna happen. And so this is just one of those things where I'm like on my board with the with the thumbtacks and then going around like taking a thread, going around one one of the tacks, right? And then going here and then going here and then see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm doing that because that makes sense. It seems like the way to get a CBDC and people to accept it is to not put it in people's powers and to plaster them as something false, who they're not, make up some narrative and then say this needs to be controlled under a government, right? Ah, I didn't mean to say that word. Um, but um, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on something like that. I've seen a lot of, and a lot of people who have just suddenly moved on, right? <laughs> um, because I think of certain things like this, right? Uh could that be because that's what's happening to them? I don't know. Could it be because this thing is um, doing something? Mm, I think so. Uh, but I'm just, I'm looking at a, a more, you know, uh, a, a what is it? Um, uh, agenda, agenda 21 or agenda 20, what is it? Um, I forgot. I, I forgot the names. Goodness gracious. It feels like it's been so long. It hasn't, it hasn't. 
uh, Agenda 201, right? And then there'd be like Agenda 202, and then there's all these things. And then you just, you go back to like, hey, like what Bill said, Bill's buying up all this land. We, if we wanna do really good on our reproductive health services, we could reduce uh, a certain, a certain, I'm not trying to say those in sentences, just trying to, I, I hate having to do this, it's just because I don't think I have the, the reach in my YouTube channel to be able to say something like that without getting flagged. And I'm no good to you if I can't post the video um, or even make comments or, or anything on YouTube. Um, so I can do it in other places like uh, like uh, Rumble or other places where you can find me. I need to post on Rumble. Sorry guys, I haven't posted there in a while. I have all my videos stored to be able to do that. Anyways, okay. All I'm saying is, is I'm seeing something that's happening with these people who are suddenly moving on. <laughs> and uh, and um, I'm only laughing to say, uh, uh, because I can't say, I don't want to say those words. This is not to be disingenuous about death in general. 1000% not. Um, so this video will age well as well. And people know that's my heart. Um, but also what's happening to people who are in power that own digital currencies and thinking about how that plays into a Revelation 13 society and why you want a new world, uh, a new, a one world currency over something like that. Cause that's what we're moving to. Um, so yeah, anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what y'all think. Thanks for, uh, all the subscribers. I really appreciate it. Um, we're almost at a thousand. That's awesome. And, um, and I've still got a long way to go before I can, I can like monetize anything. Uh, but I just want to just say thanks. Thanks for like supporting me and all that. Uh, I do these, uh, only when I feel led to, and I feel led to a lot, but I have to, you know, sit there and work through some videos. Like I didn't post a video this week and, uh, this would be pretty much the only video because this is the one that really stood out to me. Um, I do this because I feel like it's a calling. I do this because I am just being the pinky toe of Christ. That's what I call myself, the pinky toe of Christ. You don't see me, but I'm there. Just building my bricks and, and adding to the kingdom of God and doing what I can uh, for the Lord and for people to hopefully uh, see Christ in me and see Christ all around uh, with what's going on in the world. So I'm just really grateful for everyone who subscribed as, as of recently. I've seen an uptick. Um, everybody's encouraging comments, all that. I really, truly appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, and I'm thankful and I'm grateful for you. And so uh, you can do this too. This is very simple. I just sit behind a camera. This is a room, pick any room and talk. That's it. So uh, uh, thank you once again, guys. Let me know what y'all think and I'll see you in the next one.